so lovely to to have you uh, on the on the line with us, Mary. What a first of all, get your thoughts on on the World Cup in general. What have you made of it all? Ah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, look, um, we definitely have to highlight, of course, the Moroccans. And then I think they brought a big surprise to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, away from that, um, we, are, of course, have to highlight, you know, Messi's journey of uh, trying to achieve his first time. And um, the the beating has been going on, the talking, I mean, regarding him and uh, Maradona, because Maradona was my ultimate hero. Um, and then, of course, I mean, for your own countrymen and for Holland, of course, that we, we both went on a journey that we thought that we could uh, upset a lot of people and surprise a lot of people, regardless if, uh, I mean, I think your home country was kind of critical too, and my home country was critical too. So <laughs> it wasn't always what we wanted it to be. But hey, that's football, man. Football is the, the beautiful thing. <laughs> Why? Because everybody got opinions. Uh, Mario, we're going into this game where I think it's, not really a debate at all that probably the two best teams have actually got there and the manner of their performances and you know you witnessed Argentina versus Holland which was a pretty dramatic game um, where Holland went direct and got back into the game and then suddenly reverted back to type where they just stopped doing what got them the 2-2 got them to the 2-2 position so um, tell us how you see these two teams how I see it, it's like Argentina, of course, is a, a team with a lot of force, right? They have a lot of players of um, Atletico Madrid, you know, where people are highlighting what is, it, for example, the Paul that, uh, you know, Messi shadow, they call him now. Um, uh, one of the key things what the Argentinas have um, is the ultimate uh, strength of don't giving up. I mean, guys, I don't, I don't think I have to um, uh, explain that to English people because that's what I um, encountered when I came to the Premier League. You know, you guys have that resilience and when it matters, it matters. You know, you make sure that everybody knows in the team. And I think the Argentinians have that really strongly. I think if you go back to the way the country is built, it's also in that, you know, like they, it's almost part of the DNA. When you look at the French side, for example, I played in France for one season. It was an incredible season. Why? Because when I was at Ren, a lot of talents came from there, um, uh, also uh, arrived in England. But what France is really good at, they know exactly when to counter you. So, for example, um, we all know the glory times of Arsenal when Arsene Wenger was there. And when you could have a, count, a, a corner kick for you, they could counter you and score a goal. And I think France has that too. With the speed of Mbappe, you know, then Baylor and Giroud, we got to wait if he's going to make it because of the injury that he just picked up. So that's the key thing. And also, of course, the illness. Mm. Yes, there is illness, as you say, sweeping through the, the France camp to the point where they've all had to self-isolate and ensure they're not interacting as much with each other. So that could be a massive issue for them coming into this final. But let's talk about Didier Deschamps then, a man you know well that in terms of you've played with him, you've won sil- silverware with him. And actually, when you look at his career, he's so well decorated, yet you feel as though he's still very underappreciated. Do you, do you think that's right? Do you think he is underappreciated? I don't think that is right. I mean, um, you know, when you achieve so much, uh, I remember me, I think it was like right, 21 or 22 years old when I walked into the dressing room. The first thing what I did when I opened the door, I saw a couple of guys won the World Cup and it was DDA, uh, Marcel Desailly, and uh, I can't remember who was the other one, but I mean, because Petit and uh, LeBeuf uh, were not in the dressing room at that moment. But mm-hmm. them two I saw sitting and they were really close. They're still close still today. But just going back to him as as an individual, he was an individual that was, uh, you know, midfielders are always, I call them the thinkers because they're smart in understanding how the game works because that's why they're in the middle of the park. So mm-hmm. they can really, you know, zoom everybody together. For him then to become a manager and achieving what he's achieving now, it comes down to the intelligence of the game because, look, you cannot call somebody lucky if he <laughs> gets to the final of the World Cup, guys, two mm-hmm. times, you understand? And what right, he did yeah. in the Euros. You cannot call that lucky anymore. You got to give him credit. But why? Because all home nations are the same. Eh? We're very critical of, of, of our national team. So if he wins it, come on, guys. How many managers has done that? You know, winning it <laughs> twice, winning it himself as a player. And then, come yeah. on, some, some people don't even get there. So you yeah. have to imagine that. <laughs> Ma- Mario, he also does one thing that I think has gone missing, certainly in the last few decades in football, whereas, whereas he seems to be happy for players to make decisions on the pitch. Yes, but that also comes down to the way, you know, look, when, when you are a player, um, you understand uh, what players need sometimes because the creative side doesn't come always from the manager. The manager gives you instructions, right? You come on the mm. field, you know yourself, you come on the field, 
you, you get the instruction and you try to do as much as what he tells you. But at the end, end of the day, when you're on the field, you also got to bring your creativity. Because if you only do what the manager wants you to do, then the other manager will outplay you. So And the other players will understand what to do. So he leaves the creative side to you. Also because he was doing that. Sometimes he was, you know, cleaning the floors. Like, like or not cleaning the floors. Cleaning the, 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 the holes and picking up certain holes that he had to close. I mean, his time, you know, I mean, we can call him, you know, Juve, whatever teams he's been at. So when he came to Chelsea, my first intro to him was really interesting, actually. And I came back after I broke my foot two times. And I came back in the Chelsea team. And I was my first training. I met him and Dennis Wise. They were kicking me like crazy. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, guys, I just literally broke my foot and I came back in the team. And they just start kicking me. And I was like, I'm dribbling the ball. And they say he comes to me after training. He says, Mario, if I was you, I would play the ball. But you have to bear in mind, I'm a young kid, yeah. just happy to be in England, coming here and then being kicked by one World Cup winner and one is the captain of your team. So I was like, I said to Desi, hey, don't worry about it because I came from Ajax. It's the only thing we knew, like hold the ball and try not to lose it. And then I said, yeah, if they kick me, I kick them back. And Desi looked at me and said, oh, you're brave. I said, yeah, I have to. And then I find out later on, they didn't mean to kick you, but sometimes people just test you to see how far they can go. And if you're breakable, they will walk right over you. Mm. And that was my intro to Didier Deschamps and Dennis Wise. Just well, kick you. Matt Mario, um, I still bump into uh, Dennis Wise now and again because I was with him uh, in 92 at Chelsea. And he still kicks me when I see him now. So, yes. <laughs> 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 Just exerting his authority over yeah, you still. Yeah. Oh, All right, man. I get you, I get you. Oh, my God. Um, Mario, look, if we take out Messi and we take out Mbappe from this conversation, yeah. who are the key, uh, who are the other key players for both Argentina and France? Who could? Who else could have a big say in this? Because everyone's obviously focusing on Messi and Mbappe. Uh, look, the, the the key things, of course, look, I, I always look at the Baylor. You know, when you look at the Baylor coming up from the right side, uh, yeah. I always say, like, if... if if the focus is not on, on what you just said, Mbappe, right? Because we, we cannot arguably take him out. But if we then focus on the bail, I feel like their spark needs to be there. He's a very difficult player to play against. There are some people underestimate it. But when he dribbles at you, one, he is at air space. Even if he's not as quick as Mbappe, but he's quick enough. But he has a dribble that is with his left foot and can cross with his right. You don't have a lot of players that do that. Eh? His technique of handling the ball is very difficult. When you when you, when we are players, we normally I you're right feeded and then you do something with your left or the other way around. So I think he's going to be very crucial. Uh, Giroud, we all know, like I mean, Giroud is is the guy that people and we that like I already mentioned it that we hope that he's going to make it. But Giroud is one of the guys that you know he's the silent assassin, right? <laughs> people don't watch him, and then when he turns up, he is the man that can make incredible goals. We have to mention him because if you don't then you probably not have watched the French football because that's why it's one of the things. When you go to um, uh, Argentina, look at Alvarez. If you're Alvarez, you play at Man City, you don't play so many games. You know, you have Haaland in front of you. So you you got to wait and this guy just keeps on scoring and you're like, what am I going to do? But then you turn up at your national team and become one of the key figures because we can look at Messi, but if you don't have Alvarez that, that runs and is strong and, and opens up things, did you see how he scored the last goal? How he just bombarded right through the middle of it and just made sure he tapped it in. So what I'm saying is that he is one of the key things, and I already mentioned the ball because he's right behind Messi and he tried to, you know, clean things up when Messi just left. Because Messi doesn't do a lot of track, uh, backtracking, but you don't need to track back when you're that good because then you need to raise your energy on making sure the team advances and how does he advance the team yeah so that's why i'm sorry to mention him but you have to mention that because we're not it's kind of I'm, I'm being a criminal a criminal a criminal myself because i cannot say no i no, understand you know. mario um no, i cannot say that. who's gonna win it then I, I have a feeling, you know, I mean, I know the story is so messy, 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 mm. guys. And I would love him to win it. But I'm worried that France might upset it, guys. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, I no, am really, really. I, you know, I think a lot like, of us agree, though. Think... I think a yeah, lot of, because yeah. you look, Messi is the true romantic story. And athlete, you know, like if I tell you, yes, you know, it's beautiful and a great <laughs> player. And we want him to win it. And it will be great. See, But guys, you know. Be also one of the key things that someone can win also, he can implement his respect in the sense of Mbappe. If we had any doubts about mm. him, if he wins it twice, guys, come on, how many footballers in the world have won it twice? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Pele maybe, 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right to point that out. Well, Mario, just briefly, um, one day we'll have to talk about why have Holland never won the World Cup? Oh, yeah, you mm. know that already, my friend. <laughs> they've been <laughs> close. Already, they've man. been close. Oh, they've been close, but they, few can't, times. they can't get Listen, over the line. We live the dream, but now <laughs> we have to make sure that the dream become reality because I think we're missing out the picture of winning it, but we have the thought of winning it. Yes, indeed. And it's what it's Ronald Koeman that's taking over, isn't it, from Louis van Gaal? Yes. Yeah, yeah Ronald Koeman is second. But he was there before already. So yes, the indeed. He was really good when he was the manager. So uh, they were doing well. They were playing the football that the country wants because we played more reserved when we had Louis van Gaal. Yeah. And with uh, Koeman, it was more attacking. And that's what the country wants. And just lastly, Cody Gakpo. Is he going to stay at PSV or do you think he's going to move oh. on? What a player. <laughs> uh, look, there's so many competition. You know, Man United came in, then they dropped out. Now they're back in. Then you have Real Madrid. Then you have, well, who else you have? Chelsea's looking at him. Everybody's looking at this kid. But guys, I'm going to tell you, please, Natalie, <laughs> if you want a good player, and I really would say, yeah, he's talented, he's quick, he has everything, don't wait too long because then the price is becoming too yeah, expensive. Yeah. So they should really go after him right if, now. If there was a club in the Premier League you think he's best suited for, which would that be? I mean, the safest bet for me would say to go to a Dutch manager. But why would I say that? I mean, uh, you know, uh, that, that's of course. You know, if someone asks me what I would do, yeah, go to a Dutch. But you don't need that. You know, you know, you need to make sure that you go to a team that plays attacking football and they tell you where you're going to play. And you need to think if you can handle that. Because some people come, and we know a lot of Dutch players that come to Holland. But the thing is, the Dutch league is very technical and mm -hmm. tactical. But in England, you need an extra third part. And the third part is character. Yeah. Indeed. Well, you have bundles of that character, Mario. Oh, you're the greatest. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a beautiful person. Oh, see? Oh, it's gonna, always... It sounds day. like Love Island, yeah? <laughs> oh, my God. It's man. always That's a joy. Really cool. It's always a joy oh. to speak to Mario. So, oh, listen, Mario, you. thank you. And if we don't chat to you before, have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. Cheers, oh, Mario. you too, guys. Enjoy, right. man. Take have care. a lovely day. Uh, that was uh, the former... <laughs> I mean, what could I do with Oh, he's brilliant. I've, I've done some stuff yeah. with Vermeer before. He's, he's so funny to work with. Yeah. His enthusiasm is incredible. He has a great character. Yeah. And also not a bad player as well. I should yeah. mention that as well. But anyway, that was Mario Melchior just giving us his thoughts then on Didier Deschamps, the final, and also Cody Gakpo uh, and how he's got probably a very exciting future ahead of him. 